Hello everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this UI in Python that will enable you to set render time subdivisions on your objects, also avoiding errors if the selection contains any other type of nodes like cameras or lights. This will help you to create custom UIs and associated functions for your own scripts. So as you can see, I modeled this set of objects with the iPoly workflow in mind, so I can set subdivisions either at render time or by smooth mesh preview, or even converting the geometry to iPoly by baking the polygons. Setting the subdivision type and number can be time consuming if you have a lot of objects, there are other ways to automate this process, but in this case I am going to show you how to create a Python script that you, ca that you can use in future projects. Let's open up the script editor and under, and under history make sure you enable show stack trace, this way we can debug any errors more easily. If I start to change the Arnold attributes of a given object, there will be an echo in the output window of the script editor. So let's copy those attributes, those commands I mean, that are in mel, and we can easily convert them to Python syntax. The first thing we need to do is to get the selection of object or objects with the ls command. Then we convert the mel code to python, as you can see in the screen. So we get an error, because the selection variable is outputting a list of objects and not the object itself. So the solution is to set the index to 0. Now it's setting the subdivisions correctly, we just need to edit the values as needed. If we select multiple objects, we don't get the desired result. For that, we need to create a loop. So, for each geometry in selection, we set the attributes. And that should work as expected, setting the subdivisions type and number as we programmed. One other problem we might face is that the scene you're working on could have cameras, lights, manipulators and will give us an error because those objects don't have Arnold subdivisions attributes. To solve that, let's start by printing out a command called list relatives so we can get to the shape of the object. Make sure you select the correct index, in this case 0, since it will output a list by default. Right, so create an if statement, stating that if the shape node of a given object is in the list of the object's exact type mesh, we can set the attributes. And now we can select cameras and lights along with the geometry that will work properly. So, as I showed you in the beginning, we're going to create a new UI, so it's easier to select the number of subdivisions we need. This will also be an opportunity to, lear to learn some UI scripting in Maya. First of all, let's create a new file and save it to Maya's script, script folder, as you can see in the screen. I am using Sublime Text Editor, by the way, which has a free version, but you can use any other code editor of your choice. Ok, importing the maya.commands as commands, this is needed for external files. We just set the alias to commands to make it shorter to write. Let's create a function called UI, and the first step is to check if the window we're going to create exists, if so, delete it. Now creating the window itself, set the width and height, remove the minimize and maximize buttons, and set the sizable flag to false, so the window has a fixed size. We need to give a layout to the window so we can insert elements in it, 
like buttons and text. We can create a text label with a dark background color to identify the procedure. Finally, we can show the window. So if we go back to Maya and copy some code I have here, in this case we'll just load the Python file, reload the file and execute the function UI. This is standard code for this kind of work. Executing the code you can now see the window with the label we created. As you can see in the final design we will need to create a new layout to distribute the elements. In this case we will need a row column layout with three columns. Then for the button we can parent it to the main layout. Ok, back to the code editor, we can just create a separator to create some margin between elements. Creating the row column layout with three columns and the given width for each column. Now let's create a drop-down menu with the different subdivisions types of Arnold. For each type we add a menu item. Right, we just need to edit the drop-down to be default to Cat Clark, since it's the one that we use more. Here I'm creating a text placeholder for the next item that will be the int field, where we will set the number of subdivisions. Finally, we can create a button, parenting it to the main layout so it occupies all the available space. For the command that we'll execute, we will work on it next. As a final touch for the UI, let's just add some offset between the elements to give it some breathing space. Ok, now let's focus on the function to change the Arnold attributes of the objects. Make sure you set the args argument, since we're going to use it in a button. Set the selection variable, avoid an empty selection. Next we query the drop-down menu. Here we need to subtract one unit, since the drop-down menu gives us values from 1 to 3 and we need values from 0 to 2. We also query the int field where we will set the number of subdivisions. Now it's the same code I already explained in Maya, just setting the values from the variable squared. Just close out by giving a warning in the else if we don't have anything selected. The only thing left to do now is to attach the command to the button in the UI function. So as you can see, now in Maya everything is working properly, setting the desired subdivisions on the selected objects. You can drag the code in the script editor to the shelf, so you have it around when you need it. Ok guys, that's it, hopefully you learned something, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or questions about this video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.